All right. Welcome, everybody. Happy Monday. Happy November 6th. Happy whatever else. <laughs> whatever else there might be. All right, babe. Why is my, uh, you know what? Let's just do this. Virtual background thing is making me look all wonky. So let's just uh, get rid of it for the time being. None. There we go. All right. There we go. That's what we go. I'm over here in the Chino Hills office. <clears throat> okay. So I was requested by a number of people to do a talk this month about keeping a strong mindset in this marketplace. So this is something that <clears throat> I tend to think I specialize in. It's something I get very excited about talking in. Is the content any good? knows really <laughs> i guess i'll let you be the judge of that one i'd really appreciate it though if you turned your cameras on because i don't like talking to all black screens and i don't want to remove anybody so either have a picture or your camera okay because i just it's just my deal that's just my deal all right very good okay so <clears throat> let's jump into this I'm going to talk about a few different things. We're going to talk about real estate mindset, but we're going to talk a lot more about, you know, mindset outside of real estate, because in order to capture one area of a positive mindset, you really need to capture a lot of areas of positive mindset. That's just the way it goes. So we're going to dive into a, a few different topics and, and thoughts here. So let me, let me ask a question. Put it in the chat box or raise your hand, whichever you prefer. If you're driving, please don't raise your hand or put it in the chat box. Already makes me nervous enough. Does the general public currently, for the most part, have a positive or negative view of the real estate market? Negative. Negative. I tend to agree. Prices are high. Interest rates are high, right? This is a lot of stuff that we hear about from the general public. <clears throat> so there's a lot of negativity coming from that direction. Does the general public think that most real estate agents are overpaid? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> there was a whole lawsuit on that. It just ended Right. Most the general public thinks most real estate agents are overpaid. OK. So there's a, a negative view on the real estate market from the general public. There's the thought process from the general public that real estate agents are overpaid. OK, so so we're, we're dealing with a lot of that stuff. OK, so that's the general public. Do news sources paint a positive or negative picture about the real estate market? I see some of you mouthing it, so I'll just say it. Negative. Thank you. News sources make everything seem negative. Even when something's positive. Okay? Home prices are up. Making it difficult for buyers. It's like, well, why couldn't you just end with a positive and home prices were up? <laughs> Why did you have to spin it in a negative way? Right? So far, this is pretty depressing when you're all thinking, I thought this was a thought class about mindset. Jesus. I'm painting the picture here. Okay. I'm painting the picture. We're surrounded by negativity in our business. Okay. Now let's. Let's even take it a step further. Do most real estate agents have a positive or negative outlook on the real estate business right now? See, thumbs down, negative, negative. So the consumers have a negative outlook. 
on the real estate business. The news sources paint real estate in a negative fashion, and most real estate agents have a pretty negative outlook on the real estate market. We can't get away from it. We can't get away from the negativity. All right. Thanks for being here. Hope everyone has a great rest of your day. And uh... <laughs> we can't escape the negativity in our business. It's impossible possible to escape the negativity okay i'm bringing that up to your attention one because let's just state the obvious we're going to talk about creating a strong mindset but in order to create a strong mindset let's let's be adults here and state the obvious it's impossible to avoid the negativity in our business it just is we're getting it from all sources i say that so you understand that in order to have a strong, positive mindset in our marketplace, in our business right now, it starts and ends with one person. And who is that one person? I see some of you pointing. Yourself. You can't look to outside resources. Now, we have our small little group here. You can always look to me. I'm a fairly positive guy. Sometimes people think I come across negative, but that's only when I'm trying to actually be honest with you. And sometimes honesty is no fun. <laughs> okay. But I'm a pretty positive, uplifting guy. We got a lot of people in our company are pretty positive, uplift, uplifting people. So you can do that. But from an industry standard, from a news sources standard, from a consumer standard, you have to really take ownership yourself on the positive mindset. You're not going to get it in our business from anywhere else. Especially now we just had this big bombshell commission lawsuit that essentially told the general public, your real estate agents have been cheating you out of money for years. <laughs> Isn't that fun? So you got to start with yourself. You have to take ownership of this yourself, your positive mindset. Okay. So I, I want to just have a little bit of a harsh reality there that don't. You got to take ownership yourself. Don't look for outside resources. Okay. This is all about us. So <clears throat> let's talk about mindset, right? Keeping a positive mindset in this marketplace. So, how many people here? I think it's pretty much everybody as I'm looking at this list. Everybody here live in Southern California? Okay. So, I got everyone here in Southern California. So, I want you to think about something. Yeah, it's hard. Business is hard. Times are tough sometimes. Getting deals can be tough. All these other different things, right? But I want you to think about something here in regards to living in your current situation. You live in a place. You live here where every day people are willing to die to get here. Do you understand that? Do you understand that where you're currently sitting, sitting in a nice, comfortable office, I'm assuming with air conditioning, with technology that allows you to interact with people all over the world, it's November 6th, and it's blue skies and 80 degrees outside. And there's people at the border hiding in caves, trying to avoid gunshots, trying to avoid being captured, trying to scrounge up pennies to pay off somebody to get across. I start with that because... Sometimes from a mindset standpoint, we need to take a step back and realize, you know, there's a lot of people that would gladly change places with me, no matter how bad of a situation you might be in right now. You might be in a bad financial spot. You might be struggling to pay the bills. You might be living paycheck to paycheck. Would you rather go into a cave trying to get into another country? Because that's what other people are trying to do to be you. 
And they're not trying, they're not doing that. They're not avoiding helicopters, avoiding gunshots, avoiding coyotes, avoiding all kinds of other different things to get to Minnesota. No offense to the Minnesotians. <laughs> they're doing that to get here, to get to Southern California. So take a little bit of a step back for a second and realize, you know what? All right. As a whole, where I'm currently at could be better. But you know what? I got it pretty good. Got it pretty good. There's people in the United States that have never seen the ocean. Mind-blowing to me. But my, my dad has a brother that's in Wisconsin who came out here a few years ago. He was 70 or something like that. It's the first time you ever seen the ocean. You see it every day. Or you could see it every day. There's people right now, they're stuck in snowstorms already. Cold and windy, 80 degrees. So take a little bit of an appreciation for your current situation, where you currently live. Because in order to develop a positive mindset, an okay mindset when times are down, if all you do is focus on the negative, then guess what? The negativity is going to what? It's going to grow. It's going to continue. It's going to eat you alive. It's going to eat you alive. It's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So you've got to take appreciation for the little things in life. And that's not even a little thing. I get people asking me all the time, you know, because I'm, again, a pretty energetic, pretty positive guy. And I have bad things happen. My life is not perfect. Now, my life is better. I, I had, you know, I ran into a fair bit of trouble in my early 20s, but that was all self-inflicted. Okay, so I got nobody to blame for that stuff for myself, but I ran into some problems, okay? But I get the question all the time, Robert, how do you stay so positive, so energetic, so oh, you're always, uh, every day, every day, every day, how do you do that? Is it an act? No, it's not an act. If it was an act, I'd be getting paid $20 million a film. <laughs> I'm not that. But I always give the same cheesy answer, and everybody, oh, it's so cheesy, but it's the reality. I have bad days. I have bad moments. I get frustrated. I curse. I yell. I have those types of things. But as a whole, I don't know. I wake. I live in the exact city I want to live in in the world, which is Los Angeles. I've been all over the world, been to a bunch of different continents, a bunch of different countries. And I'll tell you right now, there's no better place that makes me happier than when I land at LAX. So I live in the exact city that I want to live in. I had a nice house in a nice area. Got a gorgeous wife, way out of my league. I wake up to every day. I got dogs that adore me. I got a daughter. She's too young to know any better, so she thinks I'm great. I give it time. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so why would I wake up in a bad mood? Even though I might have bad days. So take a step back. Take a step back and, and realize that you're from a where you wake up every day. Could be better, but could be worse. <laughs> so I wrote down here next on mindset, keeping a positive mindset. You need to have realistic but encouraging goals. You need to have realistic but encouraging goals. If you want to keep a positive mindset. Because goals that are not realistic won't be followed. Anyone here ever set a goal, production goal, halfway through the year, you weren't even close, so you kind of kind of gave up on that goal? Anyone here ever have a, a weight loss goal or any other goal? That as it got towards the end, you you knew you weren't going to hit it, so you kind of lost lost the energy. That ever happened to anybody? Okay, so me and thirty seven liars. Good. Me, Jackie, Rochelle, and thirty four liars. Good. Okay. Safe place. So setting goals isn't going to solve the problem because you can set unrealistic goals. Unrealistic goals doesn't help your mindset. In the most part, it hurts it. Because for most people, 
you set an unrealistic goal and then you don't even get close to, you're already battling negativity. Now you set this goal that you're not even close to. And then guess what? You feel like a failure. I really wanted to do 40 transactions this year. How many did you do last year? Zero. I can't believe you didn't hit it. <laughs> oh, Robert, you're being mean. You're supposed to encourage us. I am encouraging you. But the chances of you going from zero to 40, that's not a good goal to try to hit. But if I set my goal, if I shoot for the moon, I'll land in, and I miss, I'll land in the stars. Sounds to me like you're floating in space. Okay. So you have to set goals, but it's got to be a realistic goal. Something that you think I, is going to push you, but I can hit it. I can do it. Because if you have goals, if you have something that really excites you, that really fires you up, that really gets you going, the negativity won't even have a chance to get to you because you'll be so laser focused on I've got to hit this goal and I know I'm close. I know I can do it. So you want to start having a more positive mindset, write down some goals that excite you, not that excite other people, excite you and something that's realistic for you to attain. What do you mean that excites me? Well, let's be honest. Not, you know what some people's goals are? Superficial. And you know what? That's okay. Okay. See, some people don't hit their goals. They don't get excited about their goals because they write down things that they think they should be writing down. Well, what do you mean, Robert? I mean, like you wrote down, I really want to pay for my kid's college. And a month later, you're going, ah, there's student loans, low interest rates. Plus, they're, they're waiving student loans nowadays. Kids fine. <laughs> I really want to I really want to pay off my parents house. And a month later you're like, "You know what? They bought that house for $50,000." There's, you know, that's just gone. It's not a ton of equity. They're good. Some of you have those goals and that's really what moves you. But some people don't. You want to know what some people want? A boat. You want to know what some people want? They want to go fly to Italy for a couple of weeks. <laughs> that's what they want. So write down a goal that excites you, you, write a goal that excites you and something that's attainable, right? Pay off a Tesla. Yeah, pay off a Tesla. But is that exciting because then you have a paid off Tesla or you pay it off because you just don't want a monthly bill? Because if, you, if you're doing it just because you don't want the monthly bill, that's not going to last because paying bills is never going to excite you long enough to do the work ever. Okay. So unless it's, hey, I'm going to pay off my Tesla and with that $1,000 monthly payment, this is what I'm going to do with the $1,000 instead. Oh, now we're on to something, right? But you got to start with that. You got to start with something that excites you because then when you, when you have that, when you have that goal, you have that dream, nothing gets in the way. For those of you that are older than... You know, some of you are like in your 20s, which is frustrating, but that's a different story. There, anyone remember the show? Amer anyone ever seen the show American Gladiators? It was on like the 90s, right? Okay. So the basis of this show is you'd have some regular contestant guy like me or whatever. And there was this obstacle course that they had to go. But the problem was that in between them and the end of the obstacle course was some dude named Laser that was like 6'4", 240 and buffed out that was going to try to tackle you. And then some gal named Blade that was like super fit martial arts and she was going to try to take you out and like all these different things were going to get in your way. Does that sound familiar to anyone else's life? Is you have the goal... And you got blade and laser trying to take you out. And then there's a ball in your way. And then there's this in your way and all these other things. And you, But you got to get to the end. Your life is like the show American Gladiators. You're starting here. 
I got to get there. Okay, I'm going to start walking. And then guess what? Life happens. And it tries to take you out. Okay, okay. I'm back, back up. I'm back up. And then boom, life happens. And an escrow falls out and a client lists with somebody else. And then you got a personal problem and this problem. You got all these obstacles coming in your way. And, but if you don't, if that goal at the end is not exciting to you, if that's not the dream at the end of that, you know what's going to happen? Life's going to get in your way and it's going to stay there. Blade is going to take you out and you're just going to stay on the ground. That's it. It's over. Because eh, at the end, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So I'm just going to lay here for a while. But when you have that dream and you find that thing that excites you and gets you the, the same passion and energy that I have right now, when you have that passion and energy for that dream, it doesn't matter what gets in your way. You can walk along, 8% interest rates hit you. Boom, no problem. Keep going. Home prices are high. Boom, no problem. Keep going. There's a lawsuit that just happened. Boom, keep going. Transactions are down 35%. Hit me. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Because I got to get, I got the dream. I'm going to get there no matter what. Hit me with whatever you got, with whatever you got. That's the kind of passion you got to have. That's why you have to set the goals. Something that excites you, that makes you passionate and say, I don't give a damn what gets in my way. I'm going to get there. And until you have that, until you have that passion, that dream, and life is always going to get in the way and you're never going to create a positive mindset because every little thing's going to knock you off and then you're going to say, well, there you go. There's me again, knocked down. Because you're the only one that's ever been knocked down. Only one that ever had life get in their way. That's a choice. A choice you make. So write down your goals, something that excites you. Right? I wrote down here from a positive mindset. It's my opinion, and this is just my opinion, that I think everyone's birthright was to be a millionaire. Is your birthright to be a millionaire? You were born with the opportunity to be a millionaire. And the only reason there are so many multimillionaires is because so many other people gave up their million. Some people were born millionaires. Good for you. Some people luck into it. Lottery, inheritance, good for you. You know how most people become millionaires? How do most people become millionaires? How do most people get their birthright of a million dollars? They work. Put in the time, the energy, the effort. See, sometimes our positive mindset is affected because we think it should be easy. It ain't nothing in this world. That's worth a damn. That's going to be easy. You want that beach body? Guess what? You have to work for it. Doesn't just happen. You want to? You want to date that person? Guess what? You have to work for it because everyone else wants to date them too. Want to make a million dollars? You have to work for it. Nothing comes easy. So get out of this negativity. Like, oh my gosh, you know, I've only closed three deals this year. Okay, great. How do we close six next year? And how do we close nine the year after that? What if we just went up 15, 20, 30% every year? In five years, you'd be closing 15, 20 deals at our price points in Southern California. You'd be making probably a half a million dollars. Would that be okay? So get out of the negativity that it's supposed to be today. If you were born with the money, then you get it today. If you're not born with the money, it's going to take time except that stop feeding that negativity into your head that it's going to be today it's not going to be today but guess what the person who keeps going will make the millions because everyone else will quit everyone else will quit they'll leave because they they just let that negativity fester oh my well this person in my office they closed 50 deals this year i only closed two Okay, great. So one day they only closed two. They had to get their license day one as well. There's no reason why you can't do 50 in four, five, 10 years. 
What if it takes you 10 years? What if it takes you 20? Who cares? You're going to be alive anyways. <laughs> I mean, who cares? Takes you 10 years, 20 years. Just, but just improve. You close two this year, great. How do we get to five next year? Well, it's still not a lot of money. I get it. But then we'll do eight. And then we'll do 10. And then we'll do 12. And again, it's just a little bit every year. And then pretty soon people are going to look at you and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's closing 50. How do I do that? And then you get to tell them, I did it one deal at a time. And it took me some time to do it. See, negativity gets in our head because we think it should be now. It takes time, folks. It's okay. It's okay to not be any good. It's okay to it's okay to be bad. It's okay to not be good. You just gotta get better. Nobody's good right away at anything. Uh, Mr. Jordan. I know you've never picked up a basketball in your entire life, but we're going to hand this to you, and we'd love for you to do a 360 dunk right now. Oh, I'm sure that went well. <laughs> uh, yes, Mr. Tiger Woods, yes. Have you ever picked up a golf club? No. Okay, good. I want you to swing this crooked stick and hit this little ball 300 yards right down the middle. No problem. It takes time. Are you willing to put in the time? You'll be willing to put in the time if you go back to the point I made earlier and you find the goal, something that's never going to get your way. But I want you to think about this. I've always had this mentality. This is my mindset, right? Oh, now, now, bear with me here because I understand some of you are not religious in any way and you don't have to be religious to at least understand the point I'm about to make. But this is always goes on in my mind in terms of keeping my mindset positive, keeping myself going, keeping myself going towards a goal at the gates of heaven. Now, am I going there? We're still in debate. <laughs> it depends on who you ask. But we're getting there. But at the gates of heaven, they'll look at you and say, hey, before I let you in, I have a question for you. Why didn't you take my offer? Well, what do you mean? Well, I gave you, you were born. I gave you all the abilities. I gave you the ability to walk. I gave you the ability to talk. I didn't give you any, any mental or physical disabilities. I put you in a, in a country, in an area that has a lot of money. I gave you all the opportunities. I gave you this offer to said, hey, you could be a millionaire. You could have a lot of financial freedom. You could do a lot of really good things with this money. I gave that offer to you and you passed me on it. You decided not to take me up and just be a woe is me person. So, so I'm curious, before I let you in, why didn't you take me up on my offer? Because if I knew you weren't going to take me up on my offer, I would have given it to somebody else. I would have given it to somebody else that didn't have all the same opportunities you did. I think about that all the time. And if I ever get to that point, right? Again, whether you're religious or not, right? If I ever get to that point, they ask me that question. Why did you take me up my offer? I don't ever want that question. I want them, to, I want at that point to say, hey, good job taking me up on my offer. Well, what do you mean? I did. I gave you all these opportunities. I gave you all these abilities and you took me up on it and you lived a good life. You made some good money. You did some good things with it. Good for you. Thank you for taking me up on that offer because so many people passed on it. Don't ever get to that point. Okay. Whether you're a heavenly person or not. Just think about that mentality. You were, you've been presented with this offer to go out there and make a crazy living. Make an unbelievable living that so many other people in the world don't get a chance to do. Are you taking those people up on that offer? Or are you just going to let them walk? Because they could have just given all your abilities to somebody else that doesn't have them. Some people can't talk. Some people can't hear. Some people can't walk. Some people do have mental and physical disabilities. They don't have all the same opportunities you do. And if you're not going to take them up on their opportunities that are in front of you, then they were just wasted. Should have, they should have gone to that person. I think about that all the time. And because of that, I go every day and I say, hey, I'm not going to let anything get in my way. I'm not going to be the guy that wasted 
those opportunities when so many other people in the world never even got the chance. They were born with whatever disability. They didn't get any of the chances I have. I'm not going to be that guy. So from a positive mindset standpoint, you want to bring negativity to me? I don't have time for your negativity. <laughs> I don't have time. I'm not going to let you bring me down because I've been given the gifts that I've been given and I'm going to take full advantage of that and go live a great life. Oh, you're going to come at me with this? No, 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 I'm good. Take that somewhere else. You be the woe is me person. You be the person that at the end of the road, they say, wow, you didn't take me up on my opportunities. I should have given it to someone else that I gave disabilities to. You be that person. That's not going to be me. I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to take my opportunities. Because I have that mentality, I won't. you have no chance of letting negativity in with me. No chance. Because I'm going to keep going. So you have to just, just think about that. Let that sink in. That God, I've been gifted so many opportunities realistically. There's so many other people that don't. Use it. Take advantage of it. You've been given a voice. Speak. You want to make more money in real estate? Use the gift of speaking. You want to make more money in real estate? Use the gift of the ears you got. Because some people can't hear. You can hear. I think. I'm assuming. Otherwise, I don't know why you're listening to me. <laughs> you can hear. Other people can't. You can speak. Other people can't. You want to make more money in real estate? Use your voice. Use your ears. Use those things. If you got hands and fingers, use them to dial. Use it to knock. These are the things not everybody has the opportunity to do. Take advantage of what you've been given. I always looked at it this way, right? Now I'm different. I'm different because I I, I obviously have more opportunities than most. But 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 here's my mentality. That that I, that keeps my mind so locked in, so locked in that there's no way you can you can ever get to me. Because I think about this, and some of you won't relate to this, all of the things I'm about to say, but you should be able to relate to a few of them for this to make sense. I was born white, male, middle class American, with no physical or mental disabilities. All jokes aside. If my life sucks, that's on me. That's on me. White, male, middle-class American with no physical or mental disabilities. If my life is no good, that's mine. That's on me. I have nobody to blame for that. If I'm broke, that's my fault. If I've got bad credit, that's on my fault. Okay? If I'm sleeping in my car, that's on me. Now, some of you might look at that and say, man, that's, you know, wow, you know, well, I am in that kind of struggle, Robert. You're saying like, I'm, you know, I'm not doing very well. No, I'm not saying you're that. I'm saying you got to snap out of it and realize that you have these opportunities, but just take ownership of it. You want to create a more positive mindset. You got to take ownership of where you're at. Because if you don't take ownership and you keep the woe is me and, oh, it's this and, oh, it's that and I don't have this and I don't have that. If you keep that going, then you're never going to create the positive mindset. It's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger, that negative bigger and bigger to where it's a cloud. And it's almost impossible to overcome. You want to create a positive mindset? Take ownership of the, what you have, who you are. I took ownership of that. All right, that's on me. Because it's on me, that means I get to control the story. When you take ownership, you get to control the story. So do you want the story to be a drama? Right. Then your story is going to be a drama. Negativity, ups and downs. I don't want that. I get to control the story. Because I've taken ownership of my mentality. I wrote down here next on creating positive mindset is you can't let your mind be compromised. You can't let your mind be compromised. It's the most valuable thing you have is your mind because your mind 
controls all of your actions, good or bad. And so when you when you have all of your mind is filled with negativity, your actions will then be negative. When, when people infiltrate your mind, they can do whatever they want, right? And, and your actions will then respond in that way. Which is really interesting when you think about it, right? We have alarms for everything in life except for our minds. Think about that. Anyone, anyone here have an alarm for their house? Okay. Okay, so you got an alarm for your house. You got a you got a code to get into your phone, right? You got to enter the code to get into your phone. Okay, so your house has an alarm. Your code, your phone has an alarm. If you have a safe at the house, that's got an alarm. That's got a code. You go to the gym. You go to the gym and you you sweat and you get your sweaty, stinky clothes and you put them in a locker. And you put such a great system on it that the only way for them to open it is to get a deadbolt to, <laughs> to clip it open because our, our sweaty gym clothes are so valuable that they might get stolen that we have to put this really elaborate lock on it. We have alarms for everything there are. We protect everything we have except for our minds. We have no security system there. We'll let anybody in. We'll let anything and anybody in. We are essentially saying we value our cars. We value our jewelry. We value our homes. We value our gym clothes more than we value our minds. Isn't that crazy? Somebody steals your car. Can you go get another one? Go get another one. Somebody burns down your house. Is it possible to get another house? Yeah. Can you get another watch if your watch gets stolen? Can you get earrings if your earrings get stolen? Can you get some more sneakers if your gym shoes get stolen? You can get all of that can be replaced. You can't get a new mind. You have all the security systems on things that can be replaced. You need to put a security system here. You want to create a positive mindset? You want to stay positive in the craziest ass market that we're living in right now? You need a security system here. I can't go get a new one. I can get another car and get another watch. I can't get another one mind. I need the most secure system in the world. For this one, because if this gets broken into, it's not going to cost me a car. It might cost me a great life. Because I know people that are 60, 70, 80 years old that just sit around spewing a negativity. And I just think to myself, what a terrible way to live your life. But it's because they, they had no security system here. They let everybody in, let everything in, everything you read, everything you hear. And we already talked about earlier, the very beginning, we said everything, the consumer thinks this is negative. The, the other real estate agents think this is negative. The news outlet paint things in a, in a negative picture. If you don't have a security system here and all that stuff is just going to breathe in there, you're done. You got to have a security system here. So you got to make sure this is this is not ever compromised. It's the most important thing you have. Your life in all aspects, real estate, relationships, financial, everything will be positive or negative depending on what is going on inside your head. Don't let anybody, don't just let anybody in there. Okay, don't make sure that's not compromised. I wrote down here to put a bow on all this. I wrote down life is really hard. It is. Let's not be dumb. Let's not pretend that, oh, man, it's just easy. Just do what you do. 
<laughs> Life is hard. Anyone here have kids? Is raising kids easy or hard? Some of you are cursing. <laughs> it's hard. Life is hard. Raising kids is hard. Making money is hard. Life is hard. Raising kids is hard. Making money is hard. It's hard. But you know what? More importantly than that, is life is fun. Life is exciting. Life is magical. Yeah, it's hard. Making money is hard. Raising kids is hard. But boy, when my daughter looks at me and goes, Daddy, I don't care how hard life is. Making money is hard. But when I'm, you know, going wine tasting in Italy or wherever, you know, when we went to Ireland last year, I didn't care how hard the money was. Because life is fun. Life is exciting. I wake up every day, up every day. I have no idea what the hell is going to happen. And those fun, exciting, magical moments are so much more powerful than the hard stuff. So when somebody tells you a joke, laugh. When somebody says, I love you, say, I love you back. When somebody gives you a compliment, say, thank you. When somebody says, have a great day, say you too. And every morning when you wake up and realize that you have another day of life, put on a big smile. And when you're down in the dumps, don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Don't lose the will, to, the will to keep going because as Zig Ziglar once said, you were designed for greatness. And if today isn't your day, that means tomorrow. Tomorrow. Today isn't your day. That means tomorrow. Your star, your star is going to shine brightest. That's all I wrote down. Hopefully that helped you in some way or another in terms of keeping a positive, strong mindset when things are down and things are rough. That's what works for me. Hopefully that's what works for you. Thank you, Robert. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. All right, everybody. Thanks for keeping it real. Thanks, right. Robert. You're welcome. You're welcome. Robert. All right, everybody. That's all I got. I appreciate your time. Cindy's got a class at 3.30 Ethics Monday, so make sure you're here for that. Other than that, I appreciate all of you. If there's anything I can ever help out with, don't hesitate to reach out. And let's have a great, great rest of our Monday.